Hello, I'm Nan Jokerst, and this is our in-depth video about electron beam vacuum deposition of thin films. We use vacuum systems to deposit thin layers of materials, such as metals and insulators, onto our substrates. The thicknesses of these vacuum deposited layers are very thin, on the order of 5 nanometers to 250 nanometers. The three most common thin film deposition techniques are thermal evaporation, electron beam evaporation, and sputtering. In this video, I will introduce you to the process of electron beam evaporation, also called e-beam evaporation. This technique is similar to thermal evaporation, but the material is heated up a little bit differently. In thermal evaporation, electrical current is used to heat a boat so that the source material in the boat melts and evaporates. In electron beam evaporation, a stream of electrons, or an electron beam, is aimed at the high purity source material that we want to evaporate. This beam of electrons heats the material to its melting point and then evaporates the source material. This electron beam is well confined, and one of the advantages of e-beam evaporation is that we can rotate different source materials into the path of that electron beam so that we can deposit multiple materials sequentially without opening the vacuum system, which is also called breaking vacuum or venting. An e-beam evaporator has two main components. First is the electron source or electron gun, which produces the beam of electrons. Second, the crucible is where the source material that we want to evaporate is contained. This is like the boat for thermal evaporation. Here is a crucible with gold in it for the source material. Contained within that electron gun is a filament, the source of the electrons, and magnets for focusing that electron beam and directing it toward the crucible. The electron beam is generated by heating the metal filament to the point that it glows bright, about 2,500 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, electrons are so energetic that some of them leave the surface of the filament. These electrons are then accelerated toward the source material using a high voltage electrode and a set of magnets steer and focus the beam onto the source material to be evaporated. The power level can be controlled by adjusting the filament current. This is very important since some materials require lower power to melt and can burn at higher power, while others require higher power just to melt. The source material is contained in a small crucible. Depending upon the material being evaporated, the crucible may be made of tungsten, copper, or even a ceramic for very high temperature deposition. Because that electron beam is well confined in space, only a small area of the source material is heated. This means that there is room for multiple small source materials in the vacuum chamber. Systems that hold four materials are very common, and they are called four-pocket hearths. There are four crucibles that fit into the hearth, and each crucible can hold a different source material so that you can have up to four layers of different materials deposited without breaking vacuum. The hearth is a rotated holder of copper, which is water-cooled. The water cooling prevents the crucible material from melting and mixing with the source material or with the hearth itself. In this configuration, several different materials can be deposited or sequential back and forth can also be deposited of multi-layer materials. Electron beam evaporation is one thin film deposition option. Be sure to take a look at the thermal evaporation and sputter deposition videos to learn about two other commonly used thin film vacuum deposition techniques. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining me today.
To keep the chamber clean, it is left under vacuum. So first, we vent the chamber, and then we can open the door to the vacuum chamber and look inside. This vacuum chamber uses a mechanical pump and a cryo pump. Here is the port that leads to the cryo pump located under the vacuum chamber. Of course, this valve is currently closed as we cannot expose the cryo pump to room air. The material we wish to evaporate is held in what is called the hearth. In this case, we want to evaporate gold. The gold is contained in a small metal crucible. This crucible is then placed in the hearth. This particular instrument can accommodate up to four different materials in the hearth. The electron gun is located here. Remember, the electron gun is the source of the electron beam that heats the sample. And the sample is placed at the top of the chamber in this dome-shaped holder. Like many thin film deposition instruments, this evaporator uses a thickness monitor, which is here. So, we can monitor the film thickness that is being deposited. Let's hold our sample into the dome-shaped holder. In this example, we will use a 50 millimeter diameter silicon wafer as our sample. We place the wafer in the holder and secure it with the clips. We reinstall the dome into the chamber. We also must verify that our desired material is in the crucible. Today, we will evaporate gold, so we index to the gold crucible. As we can see, there is gold in the crucible. It is solid now since it is room temperature, but during deposition, it will be heated so that it melts and evaporates. Let's close the chamber and begin the automated pump down sequence. Remember, this vacuum chamber utilizes a cryo pump. So, the pump down sequence uses a mechanical pump to rough out the system to a few tor, then the cryo pump is used to achieve high vacuum. Here is the cryo pump controller, indicating the temperature of the cryo pump. We can see that it is currently at 11 degrees Kelvin, that's negative 262 degrees Celsius, it is within the normal operating range. We will let the system pump for the next hour or so and come back then. The system has been pumping for an hour and 30 minutes. The pressure in the chamber is less than 5 times 10 to the negative 6 torr, which is the maximum pressure the system allows for evaporation. So, we are ready to evaporate our metal. We can read the pressure on this digital gauge. We can now begin the e-beam deposition process. First, we select a recipe. This tells the computer which material or sequence of materials that we want to deposit. We then enter the desired thickness. Here we enter 75 nanometers and then press the start button to begin the process. The process is automated, so the computer controls the electron beam power and time and monitors the thickness using the thickness monitor. After a minute or so, the electron beam has heated the crucible enough that it begins to glow. We can look through the glass viewport into the chamber and see the glowing crucible. At this point, the gold has melted. It will be heated a little more so that it readily evaporates. The thickness monitor will tell the computer when we've reached our desired thickness and the process will halt. We can see the thickness monitor indicating the thickness in real time. Okay, we've reached our desired thickness and the process has automatically stopped. After a cool down period of a few minutes, the system will allow us to vent the chamber. Remember, venting the chamber means we bleed nitrogen gas into the chamber until the pressure in the chamber equalizes with the pressure in the room, at which point we can open the chamber door. Let's vent the chamber now. After a couple of minutes, the chamber pressure equals the room pressure. Now we can open the door. Let's remove our wafer from the dome. You can see the nice gold color film. Here is the wafer before and after gold deposition. Now we replace the dome, close the door, and pump down the system so it is ready for the next user. I hope that you have enjoyed the demo of e-beam evaporation. Thank you for joining us today.